This video is going to be about how you can get to Kiel from Hamburg or like how you can get to almost any city in Germany from any of the airports. So although it's going to be about Kiel in specific, I want to cover like all the bases of like how you can use the public transport in Germany, what things you need to look out for, especially if you're from somebody like Pakistan or somebody from the global south who really does not have like a big understanding of how public transport works like from a European context, then this video is for you. I'm sorry if my voice sounds a little weird. I have had a throat infection because I've been traveling a lot and the weather here is like very topsy-turvy. This morning it was like 32 degrees and right now it's like 18. Um, actually no, right, right now I think it's back to 28. It just keeps on going up and down because of all the thunderstorms and everything. I'm sweating a lot right now. Um, I hope that didn't ruin my mic. I got a new mic by the way. But anyway, that's, that's too distracting. Uh, I just wanted to have like a casual conversation going before we get started. So let's just get to it. How do you reach Kiel from Hamburg airport? I shot this video back when I was in Turkey. Uh, if you didn't know I was in Turkey, I have like a vlog series about that. Do check it out. Anyway, I shot this video from when I was coming back from Tur Turkey around like a month or two ago, but I'm finally deciding to upload it. Anyway, so it goes like this. Wait. I'm gonna bring my laptop in so I know what scenes I'm gonna show you in the post-production. This is like a very meta version of how it works, so bear with me, let's go. So yeah, it starts off very simply. All of you are probably familiar with this, but to start off traveling, you have to get in an airplane. And after you get in an airplane, the airplane lands, right? So for now, we're gonna skip all the steps of like how to board and everything. I'm pretty sure you all know about that. But right now, we're gonna be exiting the airplane. So when you're gonna be exiting the airplane, you're gonna be like walking through one of those big chutes and that's gonna lead you into the airport. So when you first get in, you're gonna see something that says baggage belt. As you see baggage belt, that means you're going in the right direction, right? Because you're going through the tube. So in Germany, there's a word called Ausgang, which means exit. In Hamburg or in like any big airport in Germany, you have the word exit obviously written in English and also in German, it's Ausgang. So just follow the sign that says exit and that's gonna lead you towards border control. If you're coming from a, a country that's outside the Schengen region, in border control, like I don't film a lot because uh, there are signs that say don't don't film, and um, I don't want to get deported that easy. So I don't film a lot. But in border control, what they're gonna do is that they're gonna ask you about your passport, your intentions to come to Germany. If you come to Germany for the first time, they're probably gonna see your visa. If you come to Germany for like a second or third time, they're always gonna see your residence permit because you've obviously been living here, right? So they're gonna see your visa. They're gonna see all right, what's this about? Where are you? Why are you coming? They're probably gonna ask for. I mean, back when I came, they asked for my COVID certificate and everything. So if you're from a high risk country, I don't know when you're watching this, maybe COVID is no longer a reality anymore, but right now it is. So they're gonna ask for your immunization certificates and then they're gonna ask for like the other important documents like an admission letter or like proof that you're going to go to like, let's say the University of Hamburg or the University of Kiel or like you're going in that direction. Even if you're going to Flensburg or Lübeck, obviously you're gonna take the same route, right? From Hamburg airport. So again, that's what you do. You go through border control, they look at you and then, yeah, it's very simple. The people there are very nice. They speak English. They also speak German if you know German, but if you're coming from a country like Pakistan, I am, I mean, it's, it's likely that you might know German, but like if you were like me, you won't know German. So you just keep going. So after border control, you reach baggage claim. So it's this big conveyor belt with all the bags going. You just pick up your bag. Very simple, very traditional. From there you go to the exit and, and then you exit the airport. So that's it, you got your baggage done, you got your passport stamped and then you're in Germany, like officially, officially you're outside the transit zone. So from there, you're gonna go to the underground part of the airport. Now that's something new for people who are coming to Europe for the first time. These airports have like a very, very well-connected service of trains underground, like running underneath the airport, or maybe parallel to the airport. So if you're in Hamburg, you have to go and find like a sign that shows Bahn. Bahn basically represents trains, so you have to go to like the train station or like the train stop which is underneath the airport. So for Hamburg, you're gonna have to like find like anything that says S-Bahn, which is Schnellbahn. Schnell is fast in German, so there's probably gonna be a sign and that's gonna lead you downstairs and then you're gonna go to like the S-Bahn area. And at the S-Bahn area, you're gonna take like uh, a ticket to travel. Now, if you already have a semester ticket when you're coming and you're living in the Schleswig-Holstein or Hamburg region, you're probably gonna have a semester ticket. So if you already have that, you don't need to like buy a new ticket. But if you're coming for the first time, you can just go to the Fahrkarten, which is like travel tickets. There are like little kiosks. You go there, you buy your ticket, and then you like go down the stairs and then, yeah, you're boarding the train. 
and the train has to go to Hofbahnhof, which is like the city center of Hamburg, because that's where you're gonna take the next train if you're gonna go to another place in Germany. Uh, a very big tip for this is like, how do you know which train you have to take? Because obviously there are trains running everywhere, right? But from Hamburg airport, usually all the trains are going in one direction. They're obviously gonna go to other places in the middle since like it's a really big train network in Germany. So turn on Google Maps. There's another app called DB Navigator, which is very helpful. It shows you which platforms you can board your next train in, but we'll get to that later. But for now, super simple search hamburg hpf on your phone or even like keel hpf hpf represents like city center and then it'll show you like which trains from the current location that you're on take you to like the next destination so right now if you're like coming from the airport it's gonna say s1 bahn so that's probably gonna be or s3 depending on like the number that's available at that time at what time you whatever time you're there so it's gonna take you to the hamburg city center sometimes because of some construction that's going on it might actually ask you to change trains in the middle so do that a very important aspect about finding out which train to get on is that on the train it's gonna see it's gonna show the final destination like for example in this one case it says s1 blankens i don't know how to pronounce it properly um, so that means that you're gonna get into train that on google maps shows that as the last name as like the address that you have to head towards so you have to get on that train and it's gonna pass through the Bahnhof. If it doesn't say HBF on it, it's probably gonna pass through that city center. So just get on it and wait till that stop. So follow Google Maps, follow the name of the train mentioned and the number of the train mentioned. Because these train numbers are the same, but the train names dictate which direction you're going to. You might even go to the other direction, like really far away to the other side if you don't get on the train with the right name that's mentioned in Google Maps or the DB Navigator app. And from there, you're most likely gonna reach Hamburg Hauptbahnhof. Now, when I came to Germany for the first time, I got really confused because I didn't know how to get to the Hamburg Hauptbahnhof from the S-Bahn center, which was right outside the Bahnhof. So this is where I come in to help you. You go up the escalator in any destination and you see a really, really big building, a really pretty building actually. And you're gonna see that building and you're gonna keep on walking. Just go inside the main building. It's a really big building that you're right next to go inside that building. It's gonna see all the like, it's gonna see all the platform names, enter and you're gonna enter Hamburg Hauptbahn or Hamburg city center. Or if you're in another big city, obviously that city's central station. And from there, there are like these big sign boards. Obviously Google already told you which train to take. If you're gonna go to Kiel, you're gonna take the RE trains, like the RE7 trains, the RE70 trains. They're gonna take you all the way to Kiel. And there are multiple platforms where you can get on. So when you're entering the Bahnhof, you're gonna be like on an incline. Like you have to like go down to the platforms since it's like a really big area. So pick like the platform where your train is. So there's all gonna be like these really big signs that show like where your train is and how you can get to that train. Like in this case, you're gonna go to the sign that says Kiel HPF. And when you go down the stairs, you're gonna see another sign that shows you that the train's gonna be here any minute. It's gonna show you the time the train's gonna come in, it's gonna show you the number of the train, and it's gonna show you the final destination. Always go for the trains that say Kiel HPF. Go for those trains that are gonna take you directly to Kiel. If you're gonna go to Flensburg, there are other trains that take you to Flensburg. And if you're gonna go to Lübeck, there are other trains that take you to Lübeck. Hamburg Central Station is really big. It's the central point for a reason. So it's gonna take you wherever you wanna go. At this point, there's a big tip though. Do not take any trains that say ICE or EC, especially if you have a semester ticket. If you don't have a semester ticket, obviously you're gonna to have to buy a, buy a ticket. You can buy a ticket at the, at the kiosk station like I mentioned before, but I would really recommend getting your semester ticket before traveling because that way it's free. Otherwise it's gonna be 24 euros. You can go to a ticket counter. You're gonna to have to pay 24 euros to go all the way to Kiel or maybe a little more if you're going to other destinations. So take the train. Don't take the ICE train or the EC trains because these trains do not come under your semester ticket. So that like, they're not free for you if you're a student. That's it's gonna cost a lot of money. And they're high speed trains, but they're kind of expensive. Maybe one day if you're rich, you can afford them. If you're already rich, you can afford them, sure. But if you have a free train, which is just as good, take it. That's RE7, RE70. You take that train and then you're headed towards Kiel. On this app, the NAH.SH app or DB Navigator, it shows you which platforms to get on. Now on the big signboards in the, the Bahnhof, it also already tells you which platform to get your train from. But on the app, it also tells you. So that's a really big convenience for you because now you don't have to like search and try to read through like the semi-German words because if you're coming for the first time to Europe, it's gonna be a little overwhelming to understand everything. And obviously you're tired because you're traveling for what, 10, 12, 15 hours. So just use that app. Maybe like on your train ride to the Bahnhof, you can like search up which platform you have to get on. So it's very easy. It sounds difficult, but it's very easy. And then you're gonna like board the train once the train gets in. So you get the train in and then you're traveling. You're gonna go, again, make sure you get on the train that says RE70 and Kiel HPF on it. It's probably gonna be like a green or a red train. Doesn't The color doesn't matter. The number on it 
Kiel HPF matters. Even when you go inside, there's gonna be on the screen that says like Kiel HPF, that's the final destination. So anyway, you have to enter the train. If people aren't already going in, you have to press like this button on the outside that opens the doors. I'm dumbing everything down for you because I don't know half of these things. So I'm not being condescending. I just didn't know any of this myself. So that's why I'm telling everybody this. So from there, again, you see another sign that says Kiel HPF. So you know you're in the right train, relax. And you sit down and then you're chill. So you sit down, you wait, and then you're probably gonna reach Kiel HPF. And that's it, you're in Kiel. Now another tip, if you're taking these trains, usually if you're taking like a high speed train or some other train, let's say you're in that category, you have to make sure that sometimes you buy tickets in which you don't reserve a seat. Just buy a cheap ticket from apps like Omi or etc. So if you're taking those high speed trains, make sure you only go and sit on those sites, on those seats actually, that don't have like any destination written on them. There's like this little thingy on top of the, on top of the seats, like a little LED that actually shows like the destination of like that seat so like let's say a train a high-speed train runs all the way from like one end of Germany to the other end but obviously there's probably gonna be some person who's using like that big route and traveling from this area to this area in the middle so that is like what's gonna be written on that on that specific like on that specific seat so that means that's booked from that area so don't sit on that that place because if you have like a cheap ticket you can sit anywhere but just prefer those places that are completely black on the top that doesn't have anything mentioned on it because that means that seat is not booked from in any area so that way you can easily find a place to sit and easily relax and enjoy your train journey this is a little bit of guidance that i thought i'd throw out because it took me a while to understand this as well now anyway you're in your city now how do you use the buses in that city that's also like something really big that i didn't really understand when i first came here in, your, in the buses like again it's the same protocol go to google maps go to the nah.sh app or even go to db navigator these apps will show you which bus takes you to which destination it's again it's pretty overwhelming but just relax there are these signboards really big signboards that have like these red red writing on them even inside the train station even outside the train station you go to them you go to these signboards and as they say at which platform is the bus that's taking you to your, to your destination is going now these buses are like have a really big network in Kiel if you're in another city they probably have trams but it's the same process there so you go to this bus the one that is going in your destination you find out which platform you're, you're, you have to go to. Don't like worry about it. Go to the platform number that's mentioned. It's gonna be A1, B1, C1, B2, D3. It's just one platform number. It's not the same as the buses. The buses have multiple numbers with multiple destinations. Just go to the platform number you have to go to as per Google Maps or TV Navigator. You go to that platform, you find the bus, you enter the bus from the driver's side and then you show him your semester ticket, you show him your regular ticket. He's gonna let you board in. You can take your luggage, find a place to sit and you sit down. And then when your stop is about to come, just a few minutes before your stop, there's probably gonna be a like, like a little pole or like any button nearby that says stop. Press that button because that's gonna signal the driver that you want to get off at the next stop. Otherwise, he'll keep on going if nobody presses that button. And then it's gonna like highlight on the screen. The screen's gonna show you which stop's coming up. So you should know which stop to get off, on, get off on as per Google Maps on your phone. Google Maps is your best friend in Europe. It's really good, it really helps a lot. So you press that button, it's gonna say something called Wagenhalt, like, it's gonna stop now. The bus will stop, the doors will open, you get off and then you walk to your destination. That's pretty much it. That's how it's done. That's how you travel in Europe. That's how you travel from one place to another. I'm sweating a lot, but I hope you understood this. I hope this made a lot of sense. And if you liked it, maybe you can subscribe or share with anybody who's traveling or anybody who's planning on traveling. Um, I'm sorry for my sore throat again. And yeah, that's the whole video. And yeah, thanks for watching. Have fun traveling.